Welcome to the So You Wanna Get Fat podcast. I am your host, not your typical chef, Brian Sow. And today with me is my unfortunately sad Sicky Poo. Sicky Poo. You gave ball me your disease. Buttery goodness. <laughs> gave me a disease. Who are you, buddy? Frenchie. Sad Frenchie. <laughs> S- sad, sick Frenchie. I know. I don't like seeing this. <laughs> What's so ironic is last week's episode, you know, I was telling you about how I was in this funk, a little depressed and, and down. Now, now you gave it to me. And I, <laughs> I gave it to you. So I've been sick for almost a month now. And it, it's one of those annoying sicknesses where you don't feel full on sick, but you just have massive brain fog. And it affects your mood because you can't be as productive as you want to be. And you know me, I like to move at 100 miles per hour, and I just fucking couldn't. Um, But now I'm feeling great because I'm going to have a beer. (laughs) I'll have some. I'll hydrate. Okay, you're going to stay hydrated. Yeah, because I've been dry for most of January. I wasn't trying to do dry January. That wasn't the intent. Did it work out for you? Uh, It did. You were still sick. I was still sick, but I, I got better. I okay. got better, and you know, here I am now. I'm about to drink out of Frenchie's dong. I have his glass today because he's dong, and I'm ding. Oh, oh, oh. Amateur. What What are you talking about? You You always pour with a yeah, lot of. Yeah, I do it because I I want I'm trying to eliminate as much gas as possible. Yeah, but that's actually my intent for today oh, okay. too, because I. After you started doing that, you realized a big difference, right? I realized a big difference. And then I was like, oh, actually, this works out pretty well. Mm-hmm. So I've been drinking out of glass and purposely foaming up my beer to. Uh... Why purposely glass? Oh, no, no. I, I, I've been pouring my beer oh, into, into a, a glass. glass. Yeah, into like a beer mug. Cheers, buddy. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this down. And am I pasty white too? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, man. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's endure. Endure, indeed. What do you have for us today? Well, buddy, before we go on to today's video of one of our favorite people we like to react to on the podcast, Jordan Cash, um, just wanted to catch up with you really quick and get your opinion on, because you recently had a bad review and a run-in with a customer. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of bad reviews lately. And un- unfortunately, you know, a bad review in January for any restaurant is like a double, it's like a one-two combo because business is already super down. And then on top of that, getting a bad review just really sucks. So January, I think in any restaurant anywhere in the world, maybe except for Dubai, uh, does poorly, right? People have spent all their money during the holidays. And Do we even just, know about Dubai? What's the reality there? I have no idea. Okay. I'm just, just saying, okay. talking out of my ass. But I was one, wanted to know your opinion. Is the customer always right? <laughs> no. Fuck no. Fuck, Fuck no. <laughs> Especially this one. Yeah. Because I got, you know, after I got all the information, this was like an old customer mm-hmm. who hadn't been here since the pandemic. And mm-hmm. we obviously raised the prices. Yeah. And he was like, you know, I was like, this is too expensive. And he wanted the a la carte price. Right. And this is, no, I like pre-theater. This is all we do. And so he was super annoyed. Yeah. So he took revenge. Mm. And And even though that we, um, like Tebow, like did his best to Mm -hmm. acclimate him and and sent over some free stuff. And and then even. um, um, Shout out to Tebow. Even like. General manager here at Lower Bosch. They ate everything. Yet they managed to complain that it was like. Right. So it was just a ven- revenge review for having to pay more yeah. money. Yeah. Uh, Mission got a couple of bad reviews. You guys can go onto Google and look up the reviews for yourself. But um, it just got me thinking like, yeah, the customer is not all right, always right. But the problem is I don't look at them. I usually look at them if I'm bored. <laughs> you or don't f- look at them at all? <laughs> I don't look at them. <laughs> yeah. No, but mostly I know I see, I see the total, yeah. right? And if it's, if, if it's good, it's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, I think we're like at four, seven, which is exceptional mm-hmm. at, on open table. Four, seven out of five. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and nobody gives a perfect score. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, we, even though it was the best restaurant, we don't, we don't give perfect scores. Like, why the fuck would you not? Right. Just help boost the restaurant. Yeah. But they don't. 
you have people, tons of people, it's like everything was great, everything, and they'll still put like four stars out of five. Right. Like, well, then what's the complaint then? It is what it is. It is what it people is. People feel like they're professional reviewers. Yes, that is another thing. The sense of entitlement of uh, just because you like to eat a lot doesn't mean you are qualified to critique someone's business establishment. That's just my opinion. It's a free country, though. No. That's what's, you know, but, unfortunately, but do there's you want no... experts every day on, yeah, on the same, exactly, on the same right, number, exa of a, exactly, on the same level, right? Like right. hundreds of reviews a day. Yeah. Like if you get, I, I, we must get on a normal day, like 10, 20 reviews, mm -hmm. right? Easy. Mm -hmm. You know, so multiply that. Imagine if they were all professional chefs. Yeah, for real. Oh they, my they, gosh. Or, they, oh. or French people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we get crushed. We get crushed. Yeah, we're not, listen, we're clearly biased when we say this stuff. But um, no, 100% right. We would be on our fucking toes all the time if it was uh, our fellow chefs and buddies coming in to do all the reviews all the time. Everyone deserves a voice. I totally agree with that. But when I read through reviews, when I hear criti criticism, I listen to everything, but I definitely take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, but if you see a hundred, five star, five star, five star, five star, and then you see one star right. and it's just a, a you know, right. vomit, right. you're like, oh. Yeah, like, there maybe, there are sometimes people. But the problem is, I don't I don't mind the review. What mm -hmm. I mind is the the it dr it drastically right. dr brings down the level. Right. So you could have a hundred five stars, one four st one yeah. zero star, or one star will drastically well, lower it. Yes, that is which is true. weird. Right. I don't I don't get the the mechanics inside the. Well, I mean that's table. just how math works on the average. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. But I think it's a little bit more. I think there's a, a smaller window. Mm. When they Maybe. when they do that. Maybe. I don't think so. Because they say but... it's the last 120 days, mm -hmm. but I think the math is yeah. shorter. I've uh, been finding myself starting I I've started to say to myself after I worked recently, uh, these past few days. I usually work at mission on the weekends. I try to be there every Friday and Saturday, our mm -hmm. busiest days. Mm -hmm. And I was saying mm -hmm. to myself uh, this past weekend, like Maybe I shouldn't be working here as much, not because I don't want to work, but because I found myself getting pissed off at customers, <laughs> you know, especially the ones that want to change shit. Uh -huh. You know, can I, you know, can, can I do build your own? And I, can I do build your own? Uh, can I get this sandwich, but with that sandwich's fillings or sauces and things like that? And I'm like, motherfucker, he's a chef curated sandwiches and you should eat it the way I fucking made it, okay? Well, I don't but, mind if I'm omitting stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 I definitely don't mind. But when you wanna change or add, yeah. I'm like, no. Yeah. What really drives me crazy, <laughs> again, we're biased, okay? We're biased, but what drives me so fucking crazy, uh oh. Uh oh, that's Blondie. That's Blondie. Uh, we gotta answer, we have to answer yes, Blondie, even Blondie. if we're live on air. Hello? 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 Give us a butt dialed me. Oh, okay. Ooh, nice ass to be butt dialed. <laughs> um, what drives me crazy is someone will come from like way out of state. And uh, I've been following you guys on Instagram for a year. And I finally made it. And I'm like, oh, great. Like, hey, welcome. This is my shop. You know, like, let me tell you about our specialties. This is our most popular sandwich. This is my mother's recipe, yada, yada, yada. And then, and then all they, of a sudden they're vegan. And then, no, no well, <laughs> that's not so bad. We have some good vegan stuff. But what drives me up a fucking wall is I would tell them about why a certain sandwich is so special. And then after traveling hundreds of miles, after a year of observing us on social media, they will say, you know what? Can I do roast beef, American cheese, and mayonnaise? <laughs> and not even eat the sandwich. And not even eat anything on the menu. And I just look at, look at them and wonder, then what the fuck is the point of you coming all the way to Mission, drooling over our shit for a year only to like build your own? I just told you this Korean barbecue's my grandmother's recipe. I have my gra grandmother's recipe. What, she was making sandwiches? No, she was making Korean barbecue. Oh, okay. Yes. But. I don't see her making sandwiches. No, no. Oh, actually, no, she used to make me these banging breakfast sandwiches with two eggs, hot dogs, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, and ketchup, salt and pepper. Oh, I like a Korean oh, and, bacon, egg, and cheese? Yeah, kind of, you know, uh, it, it also uh, 
um, American, American craft singles. I would always ask for two singles. Yeah, one is never enough. No, one is never enough. Oh, the always one have in, to do the two one slices. in the plastic. Always have to do two slices. Yes, yes. Always. That my grandma used to make me that all the time. It was one of my favorite. Well, she didn't know that she bought, had to buy that. No. no. She liked that cheese. She loved that cheese. Hmm. I think we went through this. It's not cheese. It's not cheese. It's, it's a, a cheese, cheese sauce. It's, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a cheese sauce that's been dehydrated. Right. Which is why it melts so perfectly. So well. Yeah. It would be like making a, a bechamel or a, a cheese sauce uh, and then letting it like set. Spreading, right. And then letting it. Right. Or even putting it into congeal. a block. Yeah. Solidify. Solidify. Um, you don't like the word congeal? No, I don't. Not nearly as much as solidify. Put, put, put that with moist. Solidify. Moist. <laughs> Moist is okay, depending on the uh, occasion, the activity. Uh, well, yeah, we're off topic. Yeah, we are off topic. Anyway, uh, things like American cheese and ketchup is actually super popular in Korea. There's a lot of uh, American ingredients that have come into the uh, Korean culinary fabric. Due you to mean the, American GIs? Yeah, because of the American GI presence. So you'll find... Lots of things like spam, American singles. Is fried lots. chicken since that, or was it, did it exist before? I have to be honest. I don't know. I feel like that would be one of the items that is certainly U.S. GI inspired, and then they just took it to a world their own. I feel like KFC Korean fried chicken. I mean, you is saw, you over saw the Simon's world. new place, right? Simon. Simon Kim from Coat, he opened up a chicken. Oh, chicken. did he? Yeah, but like a high end. It's the bomb. It looks insane. Oh, hell That's yeah. where I would love to have gone. Yeah. But I don't feel good, so you will not get this tonight. Mm. Mm. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. Unless you gave me that disease that we can't get rid of. Yeah, for a month. And then you're going to be sick for, for a month. If I'm sick for that trip, I'm going to be so upset. I'll, I'm going to be upset for you. Oh, speaking of uh, Feasty Boys, people liked our new format of Feasty Boys that we did for Soledad, where we kind of narrated the but like dishes. People, and- like, like, a lot of people don't stay for the end credits, apparently. Yeah. There's like, oh shit, there was something at the end. Mm-hmm. So do you need to stay tuned, for, stay tuned for the end? No, that's why in the last, in this, that episode with Soledad, I put the Feasty Boys at the beginning. What do you mean, which episode? Uh, episode... I believe eight. It wasn't at the end. I, when I watched it, it was at the end. Was it at the end? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure we did it at the beginning. Yeah, you sure? Yeah. No. I don't sure. remember. I don't know. Doesn't matter. We're here. It's about the now. And now, Chef B's drinking again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to be a, a fuddy duddy. All right, let's move on. Um, let's go into today's video. Oh, shit. We got to put these on? We got to put these on so it's easier for Jordan to edit. Oh, my God. Yes. So this is our buddy Jordan Cash. He covers a topic that makes me very upset. Is he the, the broker guy? Yes. He's yeah, the like guy. I just saw something. Sometimes he's got these weird available apartments. That's, that's what catches me. Oh, that's right here. Mm-hmm. New York City pays over $30,000 mm-hmm. a day for meals that are supposed to feed asylum seekers living in this hotel, but instead those meals are winding up in the garbage. Why is that happening? This is all food. This is fresh. This is good food. Demand at a food pantry in the Bronx is greater than ever before. The city budget cuts have limited the amount of people the pantry is able to help. More than a thousand New Yorkers who help to keep our city parks clean are expected to lose their jobs. This is one of many impacts of budget cuts announced last month. This migrant crisis is far from over, and just last week, more than 3,800 migrants arrived here in the city. All right, real quick. So we all know New York is having a big issue with a huge influx of migrants uh, because there is a law in New York where basically anyone is allowed shelter Mm -hmm. if they come into New York. And it's, uh, yeah, it's hurting New York really bad as far as their budget and stuff. But we know who to blame. We know who to blame. The Mm. people. Yeah, you people vote. Yes. Um, But this, this video covers a topic that... I think a lot of people don't think about when it comes to the management of these types of things. 
and how they can snowball into something really bad. But I'll get into that later. Let's keep watching. So videos of prepared meals being thrown away, those are incredibly disturbing for several reasons. First, those meals were supposed to go to asylum seekers, <clears throat> many of whom have come to New York City by bus from the southern border, but for some reason they never made it. They went into the garbage instead. Perhaps the meals were inedible, or maybe the recipients just didn't want them, or maybe they were never distributed in the first place. We're gonna figure that out, but there's another reason this is disturbing, and that's because you've got 1.2 million New Yorkers right now who are struggling to feed themselves and their families, and the food pantries that they rely on are running out of resources. Yeah. Yet there's food mm -hmm. in the trash at the exact same time. Which also doesn't make a lot of sense, especially when the mayor is making massive cuts to the fire department, the police department, and oh school programs. And funding to charities that help feed hungry people living in New York. And the reason these cuts are happening is because the city is struggling financially under the weight of an asylum crisis and a mass epidemic of homelessness. But oh, it's right here. 100,000 mm -hmm. people right now living in the city's shelter system, and it's at capacity. And just last week, more than 3,800 migrants arrived here in the city. More than 150,000 migrants have passed through New York City's shelter system since last spring, with more than 67,000 migrants currently in the city's care. That's an incredible amount of people, and most folks are arriving here at this bus terminal in Midtown. 3,800 people a week? That's almost 16,000 people a month coming to America seeking asylum. And not only are the folks arriving here in need of food, so are many New Yorkers. And that's why the idea of food being thrown thrown away is pretty crazy, especially when it's thousands of dollars a day. It doesn't make any sense until you start digging. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, you know, this we've all of this has happened already and yeah. we're like repeating the problem. Yeah. This happened in Miami, you know, yeah. you know, when uh, when Cuba opened up its the floodgates of and emptied out its jail and everybody came over here. I mean, that's what they're, they're just we're not learning anything. The thing I want to focus on is the food and the waste because it takes a lot of resources mm -hmm. to make this happen. You can, yes, set a budget. We're going to pay this much. We're going to create this much amount of food to feed this many amount of people. But the logistics involved of not just ordering the meals, setting a budget, ordering the meals, but receiving the meals and distributing the meals, I think people underestimate how much work and coordination is required to make sure that goes on efficiently, particularly or, with perishables like food. Is this going to be a situation where someone's making money and obviously, yeah, and that's 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 one of the you know, biggest. Is problems. it like a situation where the paper boy got gets paid and he doesn't deliver his newspapers mm -hmm. and just throws them all in? More or less. And let's keep watching. God damn! You see, this is why I love Frenchie because he basically figured it out while oh, yeah. watching the rest of the video. <laughs> Because people are scumbags. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so here we are at the Row Hotel, and videos have come out from whistleblowers of thousands of dollars of food that looked perfectly good being thrown away at this very same building. This is bags and bags of food being thrown away. Oh, this is all that pisses me off so bad. This is insane. This is fresh. This is good food. That pisses me off so bad because not only not only does food waste upset me, but that packaging is expensive. The labor for someone to take this food from a truck that was supposed to go somewhere ends up in the garbage. That takes labor to put that in the garbage. The garbage bag, the the carting We're wasting fee food of the in garbage. a lot of people's good time and working. and good intention. That's yeah. the thing. It's so in so infuriating. This looks really bad for a whole bunch of reasons. But first, it's important to understand that the Row Hotel is a 1,300 room former luxury hotel. Yep. 44th Street, 8th Avenue, right by Times Square. It opened in 1928, which makes it 96 years old. But that's around the, 2020, it, it was, went- It was the Wilford Plaza. I think that's the original Wilford Plaza. Bankrupt. And in 2022, the owners of the hotel signed a contract with the city to turn this building into an emergency shelter. But part of running the hotel as a shelter means feeding those inside. And although this part of Midtown is surrounded by places that can prepare food, they didn't use local businesses to prepare food for the people they need to feed. Another, no, another fucking crime. Somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And although on the surface, reports of wasted food make it seem like the people inside the hotel were ungrateful, for the free meals, there's potentially something else going on here. According to the New York Times, the meals that were thrown away are from a medical services uneaten and trashed how new york wasted 5,000 migrant meals in one day and you won't believe how common 
this type of shit is, unfortunately. How often in the chain of logistics, how many under-skilled, unqualified people work within this chain, do the bare minimum to cause stuff like this. Yeah. Because- And that's what it is. And that's exactly what it is. You know, how many times I caught new employees at the restaurant and, you know, like it was late at night and instead of cleaning their last dishes, they just threw everything into the garbage because Ooh, they had yeah, already- I've seen that. Before. They had already cleaned the washing machine. They yeah. didn't want to go through it again. And they're like, they anticipated closing too early and then they and then they just threw everything into the garbage. Mm -hmm. Like silverware. Yeah. I, I, these were the days when I had real silverware. Mm -hmm. And well, that used to disappear for other reasons. but. Yeah. <laughs> But every day I used to make them, because it was happening so flagrantly, I used to make them undo all the linen. And you would open up and everything would still be Oof, in the linen. That so that, now that those were the busboys that were just, oh, fuck this. We're, I want to get out of mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that happens a lot, a lot, unfortunately. A lot. People talk about, we want to recycle. We want to save the planet. We want to reduce food waste. You don't realize how... While many people have the right intention in mind to make that happen, the manpower and brain power it takes to make something like that happen successfully, well, guess what? It takes effort. And more often than not, and people don't and want to put it in and supervision. Unfortunately, it's the supervision. Yeah. And at the end of the day, for many people, it just becomes a job. Yeah rather than thinking about the big picture. And not to say I haven't been guilty of doing stuff like that before. I haven't thrown fucking silverware you know, or into food. the tray or That's, food. That guilt would, would carry me no, through. No, I, I, I couldn't live with myself. But you would be shocked at how many food establishments that mentality is the norm. I, my father and my uncle used to tell me, <clears throat> and it was very easy to verify this, but he used to say, compare, look at the garbage that gets put out at night compared to us. Yeah. Look how much we put out, which is, was always minimal. Yeah. Always minimal, you know? And then you had neighbors that would piles and piles of garbage. And one, like, how does that even happen? Mm -hmm. We'd be like, how does, something's wrong there, mm -hmm. you know? Yep company called Dot Go. And apparently this same contractor used to provide viral tests when those were in high demand here in New York, and now they've switched over to providing asylum Mother seeker services fuck. of various kinds. Apparently their contract with the city is worth $432 million, and there's some sort of investigation going on. And apparently As there this fucking was a no should be. contract, was which his essentially name means that the <laughs> It looked like something like... Look you want me to go back? Well, either way, it's not good. It's either Capon or Capone. <laughs> <laughs> No, no dig there intended. <laughs> company being asked to provide the services was the only company being considered. So Why? whatever price there you go right. with, it's kind of like take it or leave it. And according to the New York Times, the I company's being shit. investigated for the potential I mistreatment of asylum seekers in its care. And the video the whistleblower took at this facility is from 11 months ago, but this New York Times article, this is from about a week and a half ago. So the story is still taking place. It's an ongoing issue. And what's crazy is the amount of money wasted food winding up in the trash is costing the city. The city's contract with Doc Go has the meals pegged at $11 each. And from October 22nd to November 10th, over 70,000 meals provided by this company were thrown away, which means that 700. Can you tell me what, if, if, if that, first of all, if, if there are no customers in that building and it's like, why are we lighting up the sign and why are we lighting up all the lights and the heaters outside? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that would, I don't know. That's right there. I see wasted money right there. True. Are they completely cut, cut off from customers, though? We, we don't know that for sure. Maybe they still offer rooms to, uh, to the public, God. and they just segmented a, a part of it. Maybe. I don't know. We Can don't know that for sure. Just imagine going, walking through this building. <coughs> dollars worth of resources that could have helped somebody, anybody, even just one person here in New York, helped nobody and ended up in one of these things and since the amount of wasted food is almost forty thousand dollars a day after 30 days oh. you're looking at over a million dollars in wasted meals asylum seekers and are sharing their side of the story explaining why they're not eating the food residents here point to pasta covered in grease and meatballs still frozen in the middle they're pushing back today after shelter staff told the new york post they were wasting tax dollars okay for yeah. eleven dollars each i think people could expect 
better quality than what appeared in that video. And if that's what they're serving people, no wonder folks are complaining. Maybe the quality's just inconsistent. The Whistleblower's video shows perfectly good meals in the trash. These videos show low quality, partially defrosted, airplane style TV dinners that I don't think anybody It wants. looks like they got caught and then they followed through, but with poor workmanship. Right. That's what Instead it of, is. That's what it is. It's the bare minimum. And remember what we said about anyone who, who works in the kitchen. There was one guy in the viewer questions asking, I'm new to the kitchen. Uh, what, what, what's, some, what's some advice you can give us? Give me. And we said, go above and beyond. Yeah. In the food business, you are giving people things to consume and put into their bodies. You are- In charge of life and death Yes, ex that's exactly what I was about to say. And unfortunately, a lot of times, this is just a business to many people, and it's about maximizing profit for their own pocket. Can you imagine the like frozen meatballs and the cross-contamination with the other food in there, and then you give that to a kid? Yeah. Now you're- Or elderly, or immunocompromised people. It's- such a shame. The people who are being served the food, they're the ones saying that it's the quality. It's not the fact that it was available or not. This mom of two says sometimes the food smells bad, rotten, Ooh. and every time the children eat the food like that, they get food poisoning. Now, what I'm not too sure about is why people would say the food is terrible and claim that it's making them sick if it's not. What could possibly be the end game to that? But if you've ever eaten somewhere and gotten food poisoning, oh my god, my friend to owns that. that place. Your friend owns that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's not right. Is Wait, why is that not right? Uh, oh, that's not good advertising for this poor guy. <laughs> not at all on the table. You're probably not going back. You don't want to take any chances. That's not where I ate. I actually ate at Chipotle. I haven't been back since. And if people were going from this hotel's cafeteria straight to the hospital, it's no surprise that folks are being a little extra careful. And the New York Times also reports this company lowered their meal prices to around $7 from 11 How they were able to make those price reductions isn't mentioned, but some critics say that because the company's trying to save money and so is the city, this could be part of the issue. And what's crazy is you can get meals right now for $11 each from a company like Factor, and these are like TV dinners. I'd be willing to bet that these all get eaten and not thrown away. Either way, some food waste is bound to happen because everybody here is getting pretty much the same thing, or at least the options they are getting are somewhat limited. But what's crazy is these foods, they're containerized in little packages, which could easily be placed in an outdoor community. What? You yeah, like, why are we wasting it? But another thing about- The problem is also the health department gets involved. Another thing about individually packaging that mass quantity of meals is it's a lot trickier than you would think. You know, pre preparing that amount of meals in time so that everything is within a safe temperature, packaged, cooled again, and then delivered and consumed within a reasonable amount of time, it's, it's a big job and you can't have any, sh you know, you can't just have anybody doing that. But they are. There's hundreds of these in New York City. Oof. Anyone can just walk up and take what's inside if they want. Here's the nonprofit website where you can track them. Look, there's one right here down the street over on 10th Avenue. We're on 8th Avenue. And community fridges, they sprang up during Ugh. 2020. Oof. And at first they were full of food. But now that people have returned to work and inflation's pretty high, there's less resources to go around and a lot of them are empty. It's very sad. But it could be that the city is bound by health regulations that forbid them from doing this. But even if that is the case, at a facility like this, one thing is for certain, which is that while there may be excess food in the city's shelters, local pantries and distribution centers that rely on city funding can't say the same thing. Damn. Oh my God, that's, that's around here too. Mm -hmm. That's from. I don't see it. That's right. Cross the Maps, authority. There's a food pantry that operates out of this church, and many pantries like this get some of their funding from donations and also some of their funding from the city. And sadly, since the city is cutting its budget, the same amount of resources just aren't there anymore. Leslie Davis is a mother of five. For four years, she's been getting fresh meals and food packages at the pantry. But recently, she says the amount of food she's receiving is a lot less, and so are the amount of times. Now, sadly, hunger-related problems in New York. 
York City have been going on for quite a long time. This is nothing new. It seems like every year New York gets less and less affordable, and last year the monthly rent for an apartment peaked at $5,600 a month. And on top of that, a recent study shows that one out of every three New Yorkers spends 50% of their income on rent. Which, as you can imagine, doesn't leave a whole lot of extra room for things like groceries. And since 2019, pantries in the city have seen a 60% increase in visitors. Which means that even before the asylum crisis started, there was already a huge need for New Yorkers, and now the city's cutting back on funding for places like this. So, so do the math. I just was just talking to my lawyer and saying how our labor cost is over 50% of... of, of so we're for here, lower of us. Yeah, your labor cost is fifty yes. percent. Yep, with because of, no, of nobody wants to work a full time job. Right. So we have that many more people working part time job. Right. So every time you have to pay the same expenditures, whether they work a day or six days, mm -hmm. all the you know. Oh, oh, so that's uh, looping in things like insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Because each employee got insured. Oh, yeah, they shit. don't care if they're there five minutes right. or or a hundred hours. Right, right. You know, there's so many expenses to that. Right. And it's just great. It's bonkers. It's and bonkers. now with with rate, you know, people are actually making more money, and and they're still saying that it's Not over fifty percent. Yeah. To rent. That's scary. It is scary. It was slashed, cutting them out of nine hundred fifty thousand dollars each year. After pressuring some state officials, they say they were able to get back three hundred thousand dollars per year. That's crazy. So the Bronx pantry in this video, they were going to lose a million dollars in resources, and they had to fight to get a third of that back. Less staff at a pantry might mean reduced hours. Maybe they're not open every day. And some pantries have prep kitchens. Less staff could mean less people preparing food. Less people assisting guests and sadly fewer resources also affects what pantries have to give out to the people who need it they've had to cut the amount of fresh produce they've given out to their clients and they're now heavily relying on canned foods mm. to get the job done we used to be able to give out gallons of milk now we'll give out a quart hansen says the demand for food is becoming even greater in the borough what's really sad is that so many people who've been struggling for so long now have to do with even less. It's a very sad situation for everybody. The asylum seekers, needy New Yorkers, the whole thing is just awful. But on the other hand, it is encouraging to see local pantries still managing to make do even with less. And having food to give out, even if it's food in a can, is still way better than the alternative. But what's crazy is one food distribution network has too much and others have too little and they're both down the street from each other. Or at least in the same city. And also the pre-packaged $11 meals that come from that medical service company. Those are three times as expensive as what it takes one local pantry Pantry yeah. to feed one person every day, five days a week. Yep. St. Luke's, that's on our block. This, so I do. So we used to we used to serve the food pantry all the time, mm -hmm. and we used to feed also the the fire department and everything. And then politics got involved. I mean, the health department came after us because we we had to do it in a certain way, right. at a certain time, in a certain window. I was like, I know about food. I know it's safe, but like they they just put the you know yep. they just gave us the axe. Yep. And that's they, they that made it. Impossible for us to help out. Right. Which is a night. It is and gross. people like yourself should be the ones leading yep. these types of programs. Uh, but the health department don't care. Nope. They never did. Nope. Uh, and this is this is one of the reasons stuff like this happens over and over again. And you just heard that medical company that's now mm. doing meals, it costs them three times as much as this church who's able to feed them. Uh and that's because they've signed this contract. There's this big structure. The guy at the top has to get paid. It gets trickled down. But then there's all the logistics of the packaging and shipping it over there that just adds to the cost. Because this hotel that's housing these migrants, guess what? They're not outfitted to feed people on that mass quantity that quickly. Because that's a different type of service versus an a la carte menu. And what deal did the city make with these establishments that they're willing to just give up their building to, to do this? Right. Yeah. Like, how are we gonna pay for that? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And you know, at the end of the day, there's, you're not gonna give up an, a whole skyscraper if you don't make out in the end. Right. So something's happening.
This is the St. Luke's Soup Kitchen, and it's one of several really well-run soup kitchens that yeah. have been serving the local community here in New York for Busiest a long restaurant on the block. time. And although I've never volunteered here, I have volunteered at the Holy Apostles Soup Kitchen, which is about 10 blocks south of here. Look at how well-run these places are. This is the Holy Apostles website. Look at that. $30 will feed somebody every day, five days a week. And $150 provides a family of four with four meals a week. St. Luke's, they're open twice a week, 300 meals a day, and mm -hmm. they do meals to go if people need that. A lot of these places they are also provide shower, a, a shower truck. This is video wow. footage from the New York Times inside the Holy Apostles. And instead of everyone getting the same thing in a microwavable container, guests here it's have like a, a buffet. Choice. Like, Plus, they can go want. through the buffet line as many times as they feel necessary. And these seem to be much more efficient efficiently run than the city's operation with this contract where the meals are $11 per person and that's $33 because it's in their a best day interest when at a place money. like this, that money will go a lot further. Now I understand that the shelter system and a soup kitchen are not the same thing. They've got different goals in mind, but wasted resources, that's a huge problem. And I don't think that's happening here to the same extent. And when you think about it, $39,000 of wasted food a day, that's $195,000 of wasted food a week. And at some of these privately run places, that same amount of money would feed 6,500 people a oh. week. And have you ever heard the term haste makes waste? Well, if the city signed their food distribution agreement with that company as quickly as they could because there's an emergency situation, it makes sense that that contract that's could right be here. part of the Right. Yep. It's across. Yeah. That's across from the church. <sighs> this is getting me so mad. Um. Yes, there is a a crisis. There is an emergency. They have to figure out solutions fast. But on the same token, just because you find a solution fast, you may end up paying for it bigger yes, in the end. There are always wolves lurking. Yeah. And they're waiting for situations like this. Yes. And that doing things differently would have kept food out of the trash. I love the how there's a food truck on Restaurant Row now. <laughs> Copa. So ever since the story began, every single accusation of every type of problem possible has been thrown at the whole system that feeds people who don't have anything. Some people are saying the hastily agreed to emergency food services contract and the fact that the company involved is a medical services company, not a restaurant. People are pointing to things like that as to why the meal experience isn't as good as it probably could be at $11 a pop, heck, even $8 a pop. But the city of New York does not have a lot of options. And the alternative is you've got thousands of people coming here every single week seeking shelter in New York. And I guess the city could have taken their time to figure out who was the absolute best food provider possible. But then the complaints would be that we've got people who are on the streets starving and the city has all this money and all these resources and they're not using any of it. They're taking their time. I think that's what we would be hearing instead. It's a tough spot, tough situation. Is the company that's providing the meals in their generous contract the issue? And another question is if people aren't eating the meals that are prepared and delivered to the shelters for free, they must have another option. And does that mean the city should be doing more to promote people's individual decision making when it comes to what they eat? How much chicken over rice? Ten dollars. Thank you. It might not be perfect, but there's no way that's going to be worse than what comes in a microwavable TV dinner pouch. But New York is full of restaurants. Maybe instead of giving all this money to one right? food provider, why don't we just give it to the folks who are here and need something to eat and let them? It'll spend be so it much healthier. Oh These my are god. Massive questions. I don't know if I have the answers personally. What do you think? Leave I mean, every restaurant already does video. family meal. Watching. Just double it up and 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 buy it off the restaurants. But you know, that would be too much work. You know, restaurants are always have that framework of making affordable family meals for mm -hmm. the staff, you know, and good, right? Mm -hmm. And safe, you know? So there should be an incentive for restaurants to be able to donate. 100%. Without, right. without getting, you know. And it would help New York's restaurant economy so fucking much. I mean, that's one of the most, the New York City restaurant culture is one of the most attractive things about it. It's what makes it so special. Do you want to call it, you want to end with this? No. No, I mean, this story, and we move on? Yeah, yeah, we're so moving getting, on. Yeah. We need to go to a happy place. Yes, we need to, which I do have something to make you go to a happy place. Are you ready, buddy? I am ready. All right. Well, we uh, last week reacted <laughs> to <laughs> Tuesday Tips. Jacques from Torres is Jacques Tuesday. Torres. Just a tip. Your first boss outside yeah. of your family restaurant. Just a tip. <laughs> Let's see what his tip is this week. Bonjour, I am Jacques Torres and you are with me for Tuesday Tip. 
Today I want to show you how to make a classic meringue. Cannot mess up the meringue. So here I have one part egg white, about three and a half ounces. Oh, wow. So start to put sugar a tiny bit. I like to put Wait, do we have to listen over the mixer the whole time? Yeah, I guess. Of lemon juice. As the egg white starts to all right, so he's making a French meringue. Mm -hmm. There's all types of meringues. There's Italian meringues where the sugar is cooked. There's a Swiss meringue, which I'm not remembering off the top of my head what makes that different. But a French meringue is the raw egg whites with sugar. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much what it is. Uh, the lemon is in there to act as an acid. It helps um, the proteins coagulate and create a more structurally sound uh, meringue. And the sugar that he is going to add is give it that friction that it needs to like give it that silky texture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to add a little bit more sugar. So as it meets, the sugar is melting and it's making the meringue denser and stronger. I'm going to let all the sugar melt. That's why you have Kanye's West, stronger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stiff meringue. That's when what she said. <laughs> How big here. I like to add one half by weight of the powder sugar that I already sifted. That's sifted. Right. Notice he said sifted. Yes. That's very no clumps. Yeah, no clumps. That's exactly it. When you say sift, you're going to put it through some kind of strain or push it through. And, and God knows what clumps. you can find sometimes when you sift something. Yeah. <laughs> cannot mess up a meringue. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> On top of a parchment paper, <coughs> you can type whatever shape you want. It's holding very, very well. You can put that in an oven at about 220, 230 for at least an hour. Two hours is even better. So they're going to caramelize a little bit. They're going to dry and you're going to have delicious meringue. I hope that helps. Sure, also, sure does help. I used to leave the meringues on top of the, the broiler mm -hmm. after, the, you know, after it, the, it cooled down. And just the heat from the pilot mm. was enough to oh. dry it overnight. And it would, so the more time you spend drying it out, the whiter they're going to be. Right, right. right. You know, yeah. as soon as you put it in, in the oven for like the two hour, that's going to have like, well, it's going to have a pretty color. I, I'll give you that. But you can always accommodate that after the fact. So mm -hmm. might as well give yourself a blank canvas. You Good like old. This? You like it when Frenchie is the professional. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You gotta love Jacques Torres. I love Jacques. Yes, I gotta, I gotta, I actually plan to go to his shop soon to get some chocolates for wifey for, yeah? her, for, uh, well, Valentine's I'll set it up, Day. bring some sandwiches. Oh, and really? I'll set up the, uh, oh, really? The meet for and real? greet. No way. I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> that means crossing the, the river. I'm not doing that. Uh, yeah, but he's not at the shop anymore. Yes, he is at the, at the factory. Yeah. No, no. He. Ha I know he has a factory, but he has his shop in Dumbo. I know he. Oh, in. so you wouldn't go to the factory to buy it? No. Can you? Do yeah. they sell retail at the factory? I, just go. Trust me on this. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll I'll figure it out. I'll ask him. Ooh, thank you, buddy. You That'd know. be great. And then that's. Uh, I know that, he's already. He's already. Uh, I already made my request for Valentine's Day. Oh, did you? Yeah, we're oh, doing. Sick. We're doing little individual boxes of two chocolates mm -hmm. to give to the couples. Oh, nice! And it's like a Jacques Torres box. Yeah. And of course, I said, "Look, give me something for Blondie too." All right, cool. Yeah, I, I, I was planning to go next week, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring him a shit ton of sandwiches. Faux show. Sure. Remind me. Okay, we'll do. Um, well, uh, Jacques Torres. Pastry chef extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw this video and it- He won the Ouvrier de France. He was one of the youngest uh, prospects to win that honor in France. Oh yeah? Yep. Hell yeah. Ouvrier de France. Well, this guy has put in his 10,000 hours. I think this is a very good video. Jordan, be prepared not to use the audio because uh, I don't want to get demonetized. Can we, can we put our, our music? Yeah. Yeah, but this is, everybody's using this. Uh, just in case. Holy shit. First off, we're not, we're, I think we're like a quarter of the way through. Not only is this guy sick as hell with his craft of being a pastry chef, but the editing quality of this video is off the fucking charts. Just so dope. I need to follow him. Oof. Oh. 
Oh! Bro. Is that his version of a tiramisu? In, in, as a, looking like a cappuccino? Bro. And this video I was definitely not done in a day. This is a few days of production. Uh, even more of planning, mm -hmm. production, set beforehand, up, set up. Like, oh, man. I don't appreciate all this. I do. I just look at the product. You spread those cheeks, baby. Oh, look at those croissants. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh my oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Dude. Isn't that epic? That he had. So everything from the cup to the plate to the cappuccino was like his version of like a tiramisu, mm -hmm. but like a chocolate layered tiramisu. And then. And even the, the, the glass, the plate was all made with everything. white chocolate. All edible. Just, oh my God. I love seeing shit like that. Although, think of the calories doing that meal. Worth it. <laughs> worth it, right? Fucking worth it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is uh, another food clip that will make us happy. Oh, happy? Okay, good. Yes, yeah, yeah. Happy food clip. And this is, I think, a per an example, a perfect example of comfort food. This is uh, the ham and butter sandwich. Oh, grilled cheese. Is he making a croque monsieur? Watch. One of my favorite things in Paris is uh, the ham and butter sandwich that you see everywhere. It's like a baguette with ham and bon butter beurre. on it. And it is literally as simple as it sounds, and it is phenomenal. But it um, doesn't have cheese. And, you know, I also love a good grilled cheese. So when we were working on the... I bread, love... Jambon bon beurre is not... does not have cheese. Ah, and, sorry. So um, I love that he put the cheese on the pan first. Get that crusty... Oh, fuck. I love that. So good. So we started taking our day-old baguettes, and we thought, well, let's let's make a ham. People, you don't have to use a day-old one. <laughs> uh, so if I make it for myself, <laughs> cut them in half, trim the top and bottom off, uh, put them in a pan. Day-old bread, uh, a lot of day-old bread has better gonna... absorption, so you can incorporate. Like, if you're gonna do a bread pudding yeah. or or French toast and everything, you want day-old because then it'll suck up all the. Yes. Yeah, the, because know, like it's literally, it's a day old. The yes, longer no. it sits out, but the more... But for the sandwich, no. You could use a fresh But he's one. just giving you the story about how this yeah. sandwich came to be yeah. for him. It's and how they got rid of the the next day the bread that they didn't sell. Yep. Nice and crispy. Oof. Um, Oof. And then we add Mornay, caramelized onion, some sliced bayonne ham. Uh, put that back together and you oh. end up with this wonderful little baguette ham and... Definitely um, a winner. Cheese sandwich, you know, and it's like caramelized Ooh. onion soup scenario. It's really delicious. And so uh, from that point, we thought, well, let's just treat it like a piece of meat and sear it in foaming butter. Um, and so that became the, uh, yes. the grilled cheese at Pajoli, originally created by my old Pajoli? cuisine, Matt Kim. And we've Is that the name of his food. restaurant? Mm -hmm. It's one of our favorite bars. Pajoli means not pretty. Right oh, really? Or is it bar, bar Jolie? Is he mispronouncing it? Oh! Oh, and he cut it? I wouldn't have cut it. Hell to the what? yeah. That looks so good. He didn't need to cut it. I don't care. I'll still eat the shit out of it. All right, another clip. <laughs> oh. Yes. Bone marrow. I'm about to ruin prime rib for you. Because after you try it this way, it's the only way you'll want it. Now, before we get started, you can do this in the oven and it will be just as good. I'm just extra and decided to freeze my ass off doing it over the fire. Anyways, once it's assembled with your bone oh. bones, start cooking. And as the bone marrow gets hot, it will render and melt, constantly basting through the whole cook. And pro tip, brush the drippings on with rosemary. Now, I don't know about you, but I think prime rib is top tier in terms of flavor. And in classic shorts fashion, I went over the top to oh. try and make something that's Oh, so he did sear it after. I was going to say, you're, the only problem with this, you're not getting a you, sear. Yeah, I was about to say this. What's been thing. your favorite way to have prime rib? But that, that, that's, I'm you, about to you're making it overly difficult. Yeah. I would uh, just do the prime rib and put the bone marrow on top of it and you're good to go. But it's still dope as hell yeah, just to cool. see it. You know, cool again, visual. it's it's this guy doesn't have a restaurant to yeah, run. It's a super cool visual. Yeah, super cool visual. Yeah, right. I'm looking at it from... You know, I thought this was interesting, and I bring up this clip not because of this guy's weird fucking knife holder that he's wearing, right? But a lot of people, the average person, does not realize how much effort goes into food production, and cleaning an artichoke is a perfect example. And it's 
a lot of work for little. Yes, for very little reward. Lobster is another thing, a lot of work for very little reward. Now, yes, you can buy you know, lobster meat, mm -hmm. you can buy pre-cleaned artichokes. It's all this stuff is used more often than not. But, but they're when, marinated. You can't, yeah. you can't, you don't have a clean base. But when you go to a fine dining restaurant, you have to understand not only are you paying for the experience of the decor, of the service. Top quality of freshness. Of you the are paying for, yeah, exactly. No, nothing further said. He looks like he should be in Boba Fett. Looks like he should be what? In Boba Fett. In The <laughs> Mandalorian. <laughs> so just take a look at how much you're left with. Mm -hmm. He's actually going to use those scraps to, to make... Uh, stock. He'll use that to make, uh, he can reduce that and he can put that into the vinaigrette actually. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm just, I'm sorry. If I went his, into a kitchen his, and someone his, was wearing this shit, I, I couldn't make take, fun of him. I, I couldn't take him seriously. No. But no. maybe he moves about a lot. Mm, so maybe. it's just easier for him. Right, right. Rather than going back to his. I know, but it's super clean. He's obviously not have it on all the time. Right. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's not like worn out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look weathered. Yeah, it oxidizes very quickly that you have to put it in like a, a lemon bath. And that, that tail is just as good. Yep. All very that work fact. for a single artichoke. And this goes for every ingredient. If, if you want food at the peak of its freshness at fine dining establishments, that's often how it's done yeah, they're not from buying, scratch. They're not buying uh, peeled garlic and yep. peeled shallots yep. and, or butchered. They're, everything's doing is done on site. Those... Are the clips for today? Do you think today? these fancy French restaurants, though, still make their 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 stocks and their phones? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the, I think Even the very fancy what ones. If, but what if I would I would give a pass if mm. it was good and it was consistent? Right. I would give a restaurant a pass on that. But it's also a great way, but to yes. recycle all the stuff you have exactly. too. You know, so and then once you once you go that direction, then then what do you do with all those scraps? Now mm -hmm. you're throwing them away, right? Because everything can be used, everything. Even the onion skins have mm -hmm. immense flavor. Mm -hmm. People think that onion powder <clears throat> is the whole onion that's been dried up. No. Onion powder are all the dry leaves that they take off. We can take this off. Though. They, they take off all those dry leaves, mm -hmm. they put them in an oven to roast, mm -hmm. and then they grind that out into a powder. And that's your onion powder. Same thing for garlic. They use the skin. They don't use the actual garlic. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see some happy clips bring up the good mood because I've been in a good mood finally over this sickness. I'll bring us all down. <laughs> <laughs> but also, um, I just reviewed my financials for December. And despite it being uh, one of the slowest months of 2023 for us, we good. <laughs> we, we, we were within margin for everything and uh, we did not, we're not in the red. I just look at the bank account. Do we have yeah. money? <laughs> yeah. Do we have money to pay bills? Yeah. Well, my place is new. We, we're going to be two years in April and I've just been working on getting all the margins to where they need to be. They were finally where they need to be about two, three months ago, but I was definitely fucking sweating bullets going into December because number one, we were closed for three days, which is three, three days out of the month. We, okay. we closed uh Christmas Eve, Christmas yes. day and new year's day. Um, so that. Why? Because you think you wouldn't have been busy or you just don't think people would have worked those days? Uh, both. So okay. number one, compared to last year or the prior year, 2022, Christmas Eve, we did terribly. So we decided to close for that day. Christmas Day, I wanted a break. I wanted to give the staff a break. Mm. So that was a conscious decision. And same thing for New Year's Day. I think people just pose a question because we have so many people from – all over the planet now <laughs> that some people just don't, yeah, I'll work though. They yeah. like, didn't care. So we, we are able to cover it. Nice. The only day we closed was uh, New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. But the other days, yeah, like they're like, yeah, of course, we'll work. We'll, so. Yeah. 
It was good. Yeah, it worked out. I was uh, that was another thing leading into my uh, depression. And on top of being sick and the channel views going down and stuff like that, was uh, just sweating bullets about. Well, how are views doing? This past week. Well, this past week, the views have been good. <laughs> so yeah. I've been good. <laughs> Told you so. Yeah. But that's what I mean by in the last podcast, I was saying I need to stop tying my emotions into the ups and downs of the channel. I can't help it sometimes. It's it's just how it is, how it goes. But yeah. Where would you put the tissues? Oh, uh, they're right there. I'll get it for you. <laughs> I'm comfy and I'm cold. I'm cold. Do you want me to go over there and hug you? No. Nah. To close out today's podcast, I want Wait, to- Wait, are we gonna open that up? Yes, that, that's what I was gonna get, oh, okay. get at, okay. Let's, uh, you guys can see on the walls, we've been hanging up the fan art. I got one, uh, our buddy George, his son, our handyman, George, his son, gave us that. And you can see fr behind Frenchie a bunch of stuff. And we got some new stuff. I think he's working on another one. Yes, yes. I bumped into George, and he did mention that. So this is from, huh, from Virginia, Prospect Interactive. It doesn't say someone's name. So let's see. Let's hope it's not the naked life-size poster I ordered. Oh, there's a letter before I reveal it. AI art representation of Brian and Frenchie want to get fat. I can't draw, so cheers. There's no name. There's no nothing. Really? Whoever you are, let us know in the comments below, please. And Frenchie, some people watching are not subscribed. I'm sick. I, I can't deal with this. <laughs> this is putting me into a, a spiral of depression now. Why are you not? Subscribed. Oh, <laughs> I'm feeling worse by the second. Oh, I can feel the subscriptions not coming on. Come on, come on, everybody, push it now. I'll feel better. All right, I I'm not even able to see this. I'm going to give you the first view. I don't know what the fuck we're looking at. This they said it's Frenchie and Brian. They someone put Frenchie and Brian want to get fat into the AI art generator. <laughs> That looks almost oh my, scary. This is scary. What the fuck? Which one? What? Huh? Which one's which? <laughs> well, I guess I'm the one with the hat. <laughs> the and then the monster with two mouths is you. <laughs> <laughs> that is too creepy. It is creepy. It is very creepy. Did he not see this when he sent it out? Oh my god, this is super creepy. I mean, I don't even understand the burger here <laughs> or whatever it is. This is not right. Does this deserve a spot on the wall? Yeah, why not? Temporarily? Yeah. Guess, yeah. guess what? That's on your side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This okay. one. Uh oh, we might have issues. From Dave White from Virginia. Unfortunately, Dave, I don't know if it's supposed to make this sound. <laughs> Um, it arrived to us that way, so uh, that it was not us who did that. Be careful. Able to... Oh, it is definitely a picture frame. Oh. Oh. All right. So the frame is definitely fucked. Brian and Frenchie. Hi, guys. A while back, Frenchie mentioned that he'd like a picture done in the style of The Simpsons with him as Homer choking Brian his part. I can't remember the oh, context, this is be good. but given the wit of Frenchie, I know it was something hilarious. You need more Frenchie centric art, so I've included this frame picture for your enjoyment. We'll get it reframed. We'll get it reframed. Why did I put Paul in an octopus shirt? No reason other than I like that shirt he wore. I can send Ooh, you. Oh yes. Oh yeah, the one with the, Robert yeah, Graham. Yeah, I can send you the digital file of this artwork if you want to do something with it. I think it falls under fair use, okay. Uh, all right, and then there's some details. Tell me, tell me. 
Oh, you want me to read the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, I think it falls under fair use since it's groaning-esque and not actual Simpsons characters, but I'm not a liar, lawyer, and no, I didn't use AI to create it. Oh. Nice. Uh, FYI, I was lucky enough to get in on the Justin Wang collab t-shirt pre-order, and I proudly wear it to show my support. I wear XL if you feel like sending a Fosby shirt. Every episode, you guys throw in more surprises. I love hearing each of your takes on what Bo- Beat Bobby Flay meant to you. In the many years I have spent working in a huge Las Vegas resort, I became friends with most of the chefs of the restaurants on our property. Many of them actually competed on shows like Iron Chef and Chopped, and they had great stories as well. I spent a few years running one of the largest craft breweries in Oregon, so seeing you guys drinking high-end beers really touches my heart. Please continue to share your thoughts on the beers you are drinking. My wife and I have been planning a trip to NYC, so we will definitely be dining at both Mission Sandwich and Le Rivage, nice. 340 West 46th Street in the heart of New York, Hell's Kitchen. Nice. Dave Splatter White. We will make sure you get a shirt. Unfortunately, the frame broke, Dave, but it looks like the art is just fine. Don't cut yourself. Yeah. I'm being careful. Why don't you cut the, the bubble and then just pop it out? Can't believe I have to explain. Thanks, Dad. Don't run on- and don't run with those scissors, please. This is cool. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely cool. Oh my fucking God. This is so cool. He even has the Lost Becomes hat. I love you, put me bald. How good is that? This is great. He even got my mission pan yep. behind it. I mean, it's too. So is that? Oh wait, he had to redraw it, but it's not exactly the same. Yeah. Holy shit! He had to redraw that. Yeah. And he put a second one to make it uniform. I like this yeah. guy. Oh my! Wow. The octopus shirt is insane. Yeah. The fact that he got that done. That was from one of the earliest episodes right? too. That was. I remember that episode because it had no acoustic treatment yet, and I was getting so annoyed at the audio. Why, why, why can't I have that one on my side? No, no, no. The good <laughs> ones are on my side, and you get that weird shit on your side. I, don't, I want to create a safe space here. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> all right, thanks. So this is done on a computer, and then he just, you can print it out, right? Yep. That's what it, I think he, my guess is he hand drew it on a computer. Right. You know, they have those pads. And uh, yeah, very, very cool. I'm my I'm, my breath is taken away. We are, we are impressed. We are very impressed. Where do we put it for now? Uh, just put it over there. Okie dokie. All right, Frenchie. That's it? Well, that's it. What was in that today. box? Oh, that was the, um, that was this from oh. last week. The onion and the oh, dumpling. But I know I brought in another little box. Was it like something we ordered? Yes. yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Something I ordered. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, well. That was fun. It's always good to see it. You, you definitely look better now. I think I think a podcast is what you needed today to feel better. No, I feel it. I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna yeah. go upstairs and like crash. Oh fuck. Okay. But uh, um, there's a great show that I can watch. It's uh, it's the Band of Brothers sequel. Oh okay. yeah. I've never watched Band of Brothers, but I've heard great oh, things about good. it. But this one is about the air. So mm. you know, World War II buff. I like this. I'm stuff. watching a, a Korean show on Netflix called Gyosung Creature. But are you watching it dubbed? Mm-hmm. No, my Korean's definitely not that good. So why don't you do um, subtitles and then try to pick up on Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Not dubbed. Subtitles. That's what I meant. Oh. Yeah. I always do subtitles. Yeah. At least you can, try, you can pick up I, on I on watch words. subtitles on movies that are in English. Yeah, I do because I can't hear too yeah. well. And I just want to catch the names. Mm-hmm. Like in the beginning of a show, just so I know who everybody is. Right. All right. I'll let you rest. What's your, what's your recipe for like, what did you eat? Or were you not hungry? Uh, yeah, my appetite was, I mean, I haven't been, I've been eating less in general lately just because I've been on this mm. health kick. I still worked out every day w- with the exception of one week. Yeah, but that could have been what prolonged it. Maybe, maybe. Oh. Uh, but I, I took one week off of the gym because I was having these terrible fucking migraines. I, I have a headache. <gasps> Is it on the top of your head? I, yeah, it's like here. <gasps> Yeah, yeah, you have what oh, I have. Oh, you fucking gave me your disease. Yeah, I gave you my disease, Son yeah, for of sure. A bitch. Because I, uh, I was working out. I was feeling a little run down, but there was this one day I was, I was 
doing some lifts and I thought I, my head was going to explode. Yeah, like a, the blood pressure. Like, yeah. oh my God, a vein is going to pop Yeah, I, I thought I was going to die. So I took a week off the gym. Uh, after a week, I was still having the headaches, but not nearly as bad. And today was the first day where I did a full workout. I was like, oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to skip my workouts this week too. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like you have been for the last couple of years. Well, that's how I stay healthy. <laughs> I don't want right. to overwork myself. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video as much as we did making it. Remember, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. With that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef. Subscribe. <laughs> Please. Frenchie, signing off. Bye.